Jim, you look like you've died. I just want to show them bingo wings that you're showing off there, giving it the big gun. You can't tense fat. It's fantastic we've inspired other people to to, to do this. And, and you know, we're, we're innovators in our podcast, we feel, and lots of people have copied lots of things that we've done. This is one of those things we're over the moon people would, would yeah. copy because it's fantastic for the environment. My hero. You die. Jim, you look like you've died. You, you've gone from bright pink to bright oh, no. to white and pasty. I <laughs> oh, know, I can't get the colours right on this bloody camera. I, I just want to show them bingo wings that you're showing off there, giving it the big guns. <laughs> you can't tense fat. Oh, you've got a brew, Jim. Have you got a brew? Nice mug, mate. Giggly, That's a nice mug. I prefer, I prefer Craig's old, to be fair. That green. I need one of them now. I'll swap you. So what yep. we're talking about, we're going to talk about this rubbish clear report. I guess we're going to be talking rubbish, so it might as well be about a clear-up. <laughs> but who said it was a rubbish clear-up? It was a good one. Well, <laughs> should we just crack straight onto it then? I haven't got Wikipedia up, so I don't know <laughs> enough about you. So, if just for alphabetical and age reasons, Craig, if you go first, and then Jim, and then we'll just chat. Age before beauty. That's it, mate. We'll just crack on about your rubbish clear-up and your podcast, and hopefully it won't take all night because Jim's got to play netball or something. Yeah. <laughs> or is it skittleball? I've got yoga. So Craig and Fridge, better known as Jim from the Dive Line, welcome to Fancy a Brew Podcast. If you want to give us a bit of info about you, uh, tell us who you are, what you're about, and don't give too many spoilers away. And We'll have a brew and see how we get on. Well, thank you for inviting us on, first of all. I'm Craig, and uh, together with Jim, we are the hosts of the Dive Line, as you know. Uh, I'm a, an experienced diver, love my underwater photography, and uh, Jim, you go ahead, tell them about you. Nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Scuba diver, diving instructor. Love diving. Love talking about diving. Love you. Oh, mate. <laughs> Are you trying to rubbish my podcast? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will add that we are both, uh, you know, ver being serious now, very passionate about the environment. Uh, and I think that's going to come out in some of the chat we're going to have now, Andy. Yeah. Obviously, we've been talking for months. We've been diving together. We've been good friends, having lots of chat and stuff. But most recently, in Scuba Diver magazine, you had a little featured article about uh, a bit of an environmental cause that was, uh, I believe, quite close to you. And you've jumped all over it and been quite an inspiration to others, whether it be in your area or more sort of nationwide, which is kind of why I wanted this chat, because I've done a dive, as you know, quite recently, that I found was whilst in an idyllic spot in, in Windermere, in the Lake District, it was an absolute rubbish dump. I want to chat to you about the pitfalls, the, the, pro, the pros and cons about doing a rubbish cleanup, or the underwater environment, if you can elaborate a little bit on it for us. Go on, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> It, you know, sort of starting from a bit of a strange place. If you was to ask us uh, what our favourite bit of dive kit is, Jim and I have the same answer, and that's our mesh bags. Whenever we go diving, we always have a mesh bag with us, and if we can pick up a bottle and a can and a bit of plastic that's in there whilst we're enjoying the dive, that's what we do, and we feel like we've achieved something. Yeah, it actually and started that's sort off of with where... looking under a medieval bridge for some let's say, historical artefacts, but we couldn't find anything. There's just so much rubbish in there, and there was loads of kids jumping in as well, and we just sort of said, well, we've got to do something before something happens. We've got to clear up all this rubbish, and we started it. We haven't finished it. We're going to go back and do some more, but, yeah, it was just horrendous, and it turns out it's in all rivers, in all waterways, like you said, in Windermere, all the rivers, your local rivers, that'll be everywhere. Yeah. Did you have to seek any sort of permissions, or did you just crack on with it? On that one, we just cracked on with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't we didn't think too hard about the, what would happen afterwards. Yeah. Um, we did find out more about what we should have done afterwards. But yeah, it was kind of cracked on with it. And we'll probably do that again. Yeah. Um, so, so someone who's perhaps aspiring to do something similar, not in a very sheep-like manner, but purely because you have inspired me to think, well, I can get a few people together here. And certainly when I did a post about the state of the water, a few people were like, if you're going to do something, let me know. If I was going to do it right and legit, now that now with the knowledge that you're armed with, now you know what you've done, what mistakes can you help me not make? Well, first of all, if you're going to take people with you, you will be shocked 
shocked at how much rubbish you come out the water with. So you've got to pre-plan before you dive where you're going to, you know, you can't just have a riverbank full of shopping trolleys, bicycles and bed frames. You, you've got to pre-plan where that's all going to go. Mm. Um, when Jim and I started this, it was actually because of lockdown. We were desperate to, to get wet. We've been locked down for three months. We went to a local mill that's only three metres deep just to have a, a quick dive. And it was a load of rubbish and we pulled it out. And it was all stuff that fit in the, in the bin. So it was no issue. When we went to the medieval bridge that Jim mentioned, it was a whole different story. We, you know, we, we, we pulled out so much that, that a bit of pre-planning we've learned would have gone a long way in what are you going to do with all this? Uh, the, the local council were really supportive and took it all away um, but that's certainly something you need to think about that's that's refreshing because I, when I was up at Cape and Ray last week bumped into Paul Rose who obviously I've, I've had a guest on here before and we've developed a little bit of a friendship and he'd seen that I was planning to do this and when I asked him he said he'd done something several years ago I think it was with the TV I'm not 100% but he brought 247 people to that dive site so you could probably dive all of Lake Windermere with those 247 people but they brought out quite a, a couple of tons of rubbish and then they brought it all together and they did a few different things with it. But when it came to disposing of, council perhaps weren't as supportive as he expected. And you can't just leave two tons, whatever it is, in bags at the side of the local litter box exactly. because someone's going to be a bit chuffed to bits there. So he, I think he got stung for a couple of grand in having yeah. to take it to the tip or skips or something. So it's good to see that your local council's on board. To be honest, not- I think you should start smaller. Yeah. You know, Lake Windermere is not a small place, is it? Mm. And all these people who want to get involved, that takes a lot of organisation. Mm. You know, we, we just had four people in a very small area and yeah. we pulled out loads. You do need lift bags because some of it's quite heavy. Yeah, uh, I think you're probably biting off more than you can chew going straight in a, a big venue. Well, to be fair, it'll be one small dive site. It'll not be trying to mm. take in the whole lake, which is obviously miles more than I think Paul could have even chewed at the time. And he's obviously got a bit of a reputation for, for being a personality. So for me, it would just be this one small dive site and, you know, four or five of my friends that I dive with once we're out of this flipping lockdown that we're back in tomorrow morning. Um, so when that, if and when that clears, you know, half a dozen of us will go along and do it as legit. I'm more bothered about the getting rid of the waste issue. It's just a dive really in the long, in the, in the biggest scheme of things, it's just a dive, isn't it? Like you said, with your mesh bags and a lift bag. Well, I carry that most of the time, certainly on sea dives. And it, I would say, though, that, that actually it isn't just a dive. Um, you're going in there with a particular purpose, and what you're pulling out is broken glass, sharp, rusted, been in there a long time, sharp edges. Uh, we didn't have dive gloves on. We had gardening gloves that were, that were right. slip-proof, that, that yeah. meant that, that you couldn't cut your hands through... Uh, that you, you don't want to be taking down anyone that isn't very confident, A, in, in trim and uh, uh, their positioning in the water, and B, the thought of an entanglement. Be- and the other thing that we've worked out is um, knowing that we would be disturbing a peat bottom and, and creating a zero visibility environment very quickly in the specific spot we were in. Yeah. We already had some pre-planned sound signals, knowing that there is the potential that we can't see each other. Um, And so I think the level of experience that, I mean, it's fantastic we've inspired other people to to do this. And, and, you know, we're, we're innovators in our podcast, we feel, and lots of people have copied lots of things that we've done. This is one of those things we're over the moon people would would copy because it's fantastic for the environment. But you do need to put some thought into it. You do need to use experienced divers. You need to pre-plan some hand and light signals. You you need to wear the right equipment. You need to have airbags, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's one of these ones where... um, it, it isn't just a uh, jump in the water and find some tin cans. It, yeah. It's uh, you know, a bit. Uh, you got to go into it with a bit more thought. Just thinking on that, then my sort of configuration would have to change because the amount of faff that goes into having side mount configuration. Although it's great for a streamlined, you know, an environment that you need it to be streamlined and small and trim and all the rest of it. But a single mounted fifteen on the back is out of the way, isn't it? Yeah. All your hose routing is out of the way, and then you're yep. not going to be coming entanglement or entrapment sort yep. of issue. So. 
you know, and I, also uh, things like dangling reels and and uh, that sort of stuff. Um, in the in the river we were at, it was quite shallow, and we yeah. used a diver below marker, but none of us had it attached to us. We put it on an anchor yeah. uh, next to us, so people could see where we were in case some idiot came along, and jumped off the bridge, which is fifteen foot high, but you never know. Yeah. Um, but we wouldn't have it attached, and we wouldn't have any dangling reels, and we all checked each other that all of our kit was in much tighter. Um, no mesh bags hanging, no, you know, you, you've got to, you've got to expect an entanglement and be pre-prepared for that. And all of us had discussed removing our scuba kit, that practicing that drill in a swimming pool so that if you had to take your kit off, cause no one could see you or hear you. And that was the only way out. Bear in mind, we're in three meters of water where we yeah. were. So th that was the worst case scenario that you had to get out of your BCD mm. and swim up three meters. So what it's like being in a swimming pool, but we still had thought that through, hadn't oh, we Jim? Cracking idea, yeah. I think we also, having done it a couple of times now, one of the things that has happened on both occasions is free flow. So we're using our own tanks with our alternate air to do the lift bag. Not a good idea. You need a spare tank. I mean, if you find anything big enough where you need a lift bag, then yeah. take a spare tank. So you've got your 15 litre on the back, but have a spare tank because you're going to need it. You're going to free flow. Craig lost his within 30 seconds. All really? his air was gone. You know, there, there's a lot of considerations and we planned it for a long time before we did it. I'm glad I said it is just a dive because now clearly I found out it just isn't. Not only did I know the rubbish was going to be a nightmare on the surface, I didn't perhaps take into account just how much. I mean, I've, I've given this very little thought, I'll be honest, until I'm knowing we were going to have this chat. So I'm quite happy to, to not edit that out and make me look better. <laughs> it's about, I think, chats like this are about helping others avoid some of the pitfalls, whether it be getting into trouble with the count or whether it be getting into trouble underwater or getting into trouble underwater on your own. It's even worse, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, look, I mean, we, we know each other and we've dived together, like you said, and we're, we've become friends. So when you plan it and when yeah. you do it, we're more than happy to come along and help you and help you organise it if you want nice to. That's on gleaming. Um, because it's, it's not straightforward. There nah. is a lot to think about, especially, you know, uh, simple things like plan the dive, dive the plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that age-old adage. <laughs> but but also, uh, you know, a, a, a pre-dive recce of yeah. the site is, is really essential. Bearing in mind that where we started this, we went in just to have a little bit of a mooch around, be in an old bridge, see what we could find, yeah. discovered all the rubbish, and then made a plan to come back and do something about it. Mm. Um, we, uh, on that first dive, we cleared up, you know, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 black bin bags of rubbish from along the edges and outside of the water, you know, where, where it was a bit of a beauty spot where kids used to sit or still do to this day. Mm. Um, so we cleared up all of that because it was easy to do and we could reach it and, and do, do that. And, but we came back and planned. So you need to check the bottom out. I mean, the lift bags weren't to do with the weight. We used the lift bags on, on shopping trolleys because the bottom half of each shopping trolley was embedded in the river yeah. so it was put some air in a bag and get some weight uh, being lifted on on the shopping trolleys and then one either side giving them a shake until eventually they start breaking free because there's an upward pull from the from the airbag it wasn't so much that we're trying to pull a, a piano a grand piano out of the the, the water there it was uh, uh, more to do with the, the riverbed the, the windermere could be completely different so depth is important the what the substructure is of the floor that you're trying to get the, the rubbish from how deep is it where is it how embedded and so you really need to go and have a look do a dive make a plan think about it and then keep the numbers small i would say no more than four divers because of the responsibility you, you know you just need to be able to communicate and everyone understand the plan and you lose yeah. Uh, the control when there's too many people. How did you go about sort of the advertising of it before and and after? Oh, uh, we didn't. We we knew who we wanted to come and help us. Yeah. Why we wanted them to come and help us. So that was relatively straightforward. We just chose them, asked them if they could do it when they were free, um, and went through the plan with them. Um, we spent a while. Craig done a, a big plan on a A4 bit of paper, turned into about three pages, and then we just sent it to them. Said, look, if you want to add anything, take anything off. But safety is the first thing, isn't it? So yeah. we had to put that plan into place, having seen the site already, mm. um, like Craig said, because there's so much rubbish, but it's all on different levels. Yeah. And with limited viz, there's a potential risk there with when you're pulling stuff out and it just, honestly, it goes black. And just because it's only three metres doesn't mean a thing, does it? Yeah. So well, this, this is on a sort of 
a really steep incline drops to about well we were i think it's about 30 meters deep is windermere but it, mm. after about seven or eight it's just jet black it's like a night dive whichever direction you look it is it's honestly and that's without you kicking the vis up so short of us spreading out and keeping apart because there's no real flow it is hard because the it just hangs, doesn't it? Like a snot in the water. It doesn't move. And I guess because I was the most experienced there, have been the scuba instructor, I took responsibility for kind of everybody. I didn't have to, but yeah. I kind of felt that that was what I had to do. Yeah. So Emma, who came with us, mm. um, is going through a dive master training at the moment. I kind of took her, if you like, I don't want to degrade what she's done, but she's yeah. a very good diver, but it took her under my wing just to make sure she was safe. Yeah. Craig and Matt could look after themselves. I get you. And at one point, Emma did have to come up. Even though it was three metres, it was a little bit, whoa, what's going on? Matt yeah. was spinning around. His tank nearly hit her on the head. Wow. You know, while we're trying to pull stuff out. And so I've got my hand on Emma's head, pushing her away. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm sort of going right up to her. So I'm like, we're going <laughs> up. We're going up. Leave them to it just for this moment. So, you know, if you're organising something, you're the lead Mm. person in it you've got to organize it haven't you and you like yeah. Craig said, maybe responsibility for for other people fine and i know you could do that and you're mm. quite capable of doing that but it's it's a it's quite a lot to it yeah it's funny you say that because i interviewed a guy the other day um from narc so he's in Pembrokeshire, the uh, neptune's army of rubbish cleaners or something his name his, his group is Yep. So it's basically like Ghost Fishing UK, but on a much smaller scale. It's just them in their town. And I asked him about what training do they do, you know, to bring new volunteers in, knowing full well that Ghost Fishing UK do do some training, don't they? And it's interesting how you just talked about that then, Jim, where, you know, there's things that you can't account for. You're all quite reasonably experienced divers, well, from what you told me. You know, if, you, if she's a dive master trainee, clearly she's got a bit of experience, yeah. actually, and some now about her, but... You can't sort of account for the unexpected sometimes, whereas with a bit more training like this Ghost Fishing UK, you know, they, they work in teams, don't they? Two people working, one person is safety in that team. Whereas this narc, don't do any. No, He said, I'll just get you in the water, see, what, see how you are, and I kind of introduce you to tasks, you know, gently, you know, so you, you don't start with a big mammoth task at the beginning. You, but you, you can do that yourself. That's what yeah. I'm saying. If you start on a smaller area, so you've got a local river, or mm. get where you went snorkeling under that, was it Devil's Bridge? Do something like that first. I mean, we've learned a lot in the two or three times that we've done it now. I feel we're in a different space to where we were when we first did it. Yeah. So I think it's, when, it, it doesn't seem it, Jim, but we were about five or six because we did three clear ups at, at Horstead Mill before we even went to the other place. So, and there's a couple of times there. So you forget, you know, it's, it's been quite a few times. But I think uh, going back to what you were saying, Jim, uh, Andy, the, the recce is so important that, that you know, understanding what you're in for and what mm. people were to expect and being able to come up with a, a safety plan. If you haven't been in the water and looked at your terrain, third it up and seeing what happens. And if you move to the side, are you instantly out of it or does it just hang there? And, um, you know, where we were, the river was flowing. So if you moved, you know, a foot to one side, you know, 30 centimetres to one side, crystal clear water. Well, not, yeah. not that crystal clear, but you were, out of, <laughs> you were out of the murk that you'd created yeah. and because of the flow of the river, the, you know, the river That's was awful, moving. Yeah. You, you are not going to get that in Windermere. It's just going to hang because it's mm. still water effectively. So the wreck is really important in understanding what you're in for uh, and then planning that out, you know, with uh, the, the experienced people you're going to go with. So obviously you're now going into tier three tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. So you can leave home and get out or can, are you sort of housebound now? No, no. So from my understanding is I can still go and work tomorrow exactly as I was. What I can't do is go into a tier two. I can't associate with anyone outside or inside a building. So I can't meet you at the pub in a group of six. It's a group of six, but from one bubble. I was just going to say, we're going to do a, another clear up in the next couple of weeks, maybe next week. Yeah. Um, and you could have come down and, and helped us with that. Keep threatening to come down anyway, so you could have <laughs> helped us with that. But if you if you got the lurgy, we don't yeah. want you. Well, funny you should say that. That eye test I've just been for, I was told to go and sit in the waiting room and there's a woman there with no mask on. I went, ooh, <laughs> not sitting near you, you've got no mask on. And she went, don't come off at me. You don't know what I've been through. I don't have to wear one. I'm like, fuck off. Get a mask yeah, that's on. funny. That's funny. But, but, um, uh, 
Yeah, yeah so unfortunately, we're so far apart. So, it, you know, the yeah. travelling now in, in these circumstances is not easy. But we're at the end of the phone and an email. If there's anything we can do to help yeah. with advice or from our experience, yeah. we're more than happy to, to do that. And if we inspire other di di uh, divers to, to, to get into their local rivers, um, as we've harped on about this whole chat, you know, do it safely, be careful, plan it. Don't just jump in and, and uh, go off without a plan. But, but you know, if we inspire other people to, to clear up the rivers, fantastic. I kind of think um, getting the, the word out afterwards is probably a good thing as well. Obviously, if I didn't know you two, I didn't follow you what you do on social media and with your podcast and YouTube, I would have never heard about it. And I'll be honest, it's rare that I get Scuba Diver magazine because... It's only every, every now and again a nip into Northern Diver and it's a, there's a free copy there. And quite often it's like last month. So luckily, you know Mark Evans quite well, don't you? So you kind of, you'd liaised with him and got a bit of a, a spiel together. So did that sort of play out quite easily, quite well? Mark was really supportive. Uh, <laughs> and he actually came to us. He'd heard it. We didn't go to him and say, oh, Mark, right. are you do something with this. He, yeah. he actually heard about it and, and said, I'm, that's brilliant what you guys did. I'm going to promote that for you. And thank right. you very much. Really appreciate that, Mark. And yeah. he's been very supportive and, and you know, uh, the magazine is, is brilliant and we love it. But so, yeah, we've got a good relationship with Mark, but uh, um, we've got some local press coverage and he'd picked up on that. And, uh, um, you know, that's a great thing. It, you know, we're showing divers doing something good for the environment. Absolutely. Can't see me doing this too quickly, like certainly not before Christmas. I think it's going to be certainly between January and Easter. I think purely yeah. because I've got so much other things. We're, we're all busy this time of year, aren't we? With Christmas coming up and, and everything else. And good thing you've got time. And uh, honestly, I really would get yourself in a in a river, local river. Yeah. Try it out. Try just lifting out. Uh, if there's no trolleys in there, go and get a few. Put them in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, there's plenty. <laughs> there's plenty. Uh... Yeah. The other but thing you've got be, to be careful yeah. of that we didn't mention at all is that the the trolleys you pull out if you find them. Yeah. The council can't take them away. Effectively, the council would be stealing the trolley because the ownership of the trolley remains with the supermarket. And we pulled out at least half a dozen, seven, maybe even eight trolleys. Jim went along to the local supermarket uh, and had a chat with the manager and told him what we'd been done. And, and you, well, you picked that up, Jim. You had a chat with him. Yeah, no, I mean, they were pretty good. I mean, it was weight trays, wasn't it? So... Um, yeah, I told him literally they're his trolleys. He's got to pick them up. Yeah, because no one else can. The environment agency couldn't. Um, the council couldn't. No one could. It had to be them. Otherwise, it's theft. But they were pretty good, actually. They they went down the same day, and by two o'clock that afternoon, had picked them up and they were gone. No way. That's easy. Yeah. But bear in mind, these have been under the water for an awful long time. I mean, these were wrecks. They were yeah. completely unusable. Waitrose would have had to pay to scrap them. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, it wasn't like in my wash and put them back in the trolley line. These were awful because yeah. uh, they've been under water for donkey's years. So, mm -hmm. uh, but to their credit, and other supermarkets are available, but to their credit, Waitrose were fantastic. I I'd probably struggle if it was around here because the scrap man had come and get them <laughs> before I got Tesco around to pick them up. The scrap man have them away. But just stick on your wall yeah oh yeah my car battery didn't I? i'd left the car battery outside of our house craig for about 20 minutes and it had gone when i come out to move it it, it, it did add it i'm like it's because it wasn't a new bosch one a couple of hundred quids worth and it was an old one that was goose and i'd literally i was tidying my garage left it on the wall and scrap man had like done a, a dash back he probably little crawl up me got up my lawn and had it away Oh, I've just moved house. I've got a load of t stuff to take to the tip. All I need to do is come up and put it on your wall. That'll be it. Be gone. <laughs> so what other tips and techniques or tricks have you got for me that I might not have thought about then? Once I've done it, how am I going to publicise it quite well? Do you think go to my local press, local I media? Would. Yeah, I would. I'd, I'd go to the local press and just see what they, you know, everyone's interested in the environment, aren't they? Mm and what we're doing so yeah i mean it's a little bit different for you you're, you're more tech and and cave diving and all that kind of thing um so that's a very good way for you to to get more awareness about what you do try anyone and everyone yeah. um this is what we said that let's just contact anybody who's interested because it's such a wide circle of people that you're reaching um and it's such hot thing isn't it no matter yeah. what the environment or cons conservation is at the moment whether it's a river, whether it's the seas and oceans, whether mm. it's a, um, you know, yeah. a landfill. And we purposely stayed quiet 
about it before the event because first of all the danger side we didn't want to fill the river up with a whole load of sheep all saying oh that's a great idea we, we needed to yeah. make sure that the the people that were involved in the plan and knew what we were doing were the people that were there so we specifically didn't start publicizing what we were doing because we didn't want the 200 people or 50 people turning up all thinking oh we can't go off diving on a liverboard let's go and do this because yeah we it was a small area and we didn't want to create a free for all mm. maybe that's something in three years time maybe that's exactly what we'll be doing but now at the early mm. stages we wanted to keep it contained and i definitely would recommend that for you go and do a recce keep keep your numbers down you know and, and keep hold of the safety right. i think that's the thing isn't it i think it's it was kept quiet because although we want to encourage people to go out and do this in every corner of the country, yeah, get in every single river, you don't want just anybody to go and do it. Yeah, you've got to have some experience, you've got mm. to have some awareness of the environment that you're in and that safety side of it. So, yeah, that I think that's why we kept it quiet because there's a lot of divers out there who think, Oh, I'll go and do that. And I'd hate to have that on my conscience that yeah. some divers that are just qualified. I'm qualified to 18 metres, so three yeah. metres is no problem. Mm. You don't want to encourage that kind of person to jump in just yet, do you? No, it's, it's quite easily to become task loaded, isn't it? Not easy. Mm. Yeah. You know, the, the depth is not, you know, not relevant. Yeah. But pe people, um, the fact that, that actually, let me say that again, the depth is very relevant because people might feel over safe because it's so shallow. Yeah. in a river and you know, they may go into three meters thinking if it's only three meters this is really mm. easy and that that could potentially catch you out you really got to think it through uh, as a um you know the type of dive that it is and that's moving sharp objects with rust and glass and stuff that that can harm you cut you and trap you um yeah. and you've got to think about all of that first mm. so finally then just wrapping up what's your favorite fish <laughs> 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 and can it give a twirl? <laughs> oh, you're finding I've got big plans. I'll tell oh, you. yeah. I've got a big shit coming. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for coming on, guys. I appreciate it because obviously I'll edit it down. It'll only be about 20 minutes because I'll take all Craig's shit out and just be me and you, Jim. <laughs> Thank God you're wrapping it up. Feels like I've been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't be jealous. Yeah, because we're normally on for about an hour and a half, aren't we? You ring me, you say, Jim. Just five minutes, an hour and a fifteen minutes later, after you've you've had a rant at me, we'd put YouTube, the world of YouTube, to rights. We'd put the world of scuba to rights, and oh. that's your five minute call. An hour and forty minutes later. <laughs> Ace. But if nothing else, it'll hopefully inspire a few people to be a bit a bit safer if they're going doing this. If not else, won't it? Absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I mean, that was genuine what Jim said is that yeah. you've you got to try and harp on a little bit about the safety because what we don't want on our conscience is people going, yeah. oh, what a great idea, and then going drowning yeah. because they thought it was a real easy thing to go and mm. do. You need to think it through. Defo. Right, go on then. Go, go to your netball. What are you doing, Jim? <laughs> At least I can. <laughs> Shut up. I'm going, making, I'm going making some cheese and ham keys for my wife because she's I tired. might go to the pub. Go to the pub. Oh, you're both a bunch of knobs. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on then. Thanks for See coming, later. boys. Yeah. See you later. later.